I am so glad you joined me today. We have got a fantastic day today. It's Q&A day. What does that mean? Ask your anything day. <laughs> yes, it is. And so I've compiled a group of questions per usual for all of you ladies. Now, before I get started on these fabulous questions. I want everyone that's new to me and that's visiting here today to feel free. I invite you to scroll on down, hit that subscribe button, and girlfriend, see that notification bell, go ahead and hit that too. It'll be notifying you of my upcoming videos. I generally video twice a week now, okay? So here we go, on with the show. This is going to be hot today, ladies. We got some good ones. Okay, first question. Dear Sharon, my name is Kathleen, and this is about my husband. I found him cheating, and I am absolutely devastated. We've been married 28 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I found him cheating with my junior league girlfriends. We have these meetings weekly, and we do things in our area and in our neighborhood and in our very affluent subdivision. And these two Junior League friends were actually very good friends of mine. Oh my gosh. So I found out through the gossiping that was going on what he had been doing and what they had been doing with him. He was actually taking this friends down to our lake house during the week and having affairs with them. So I don't know what to do. I'm beside myself. Everybody knows about it. It is horrifying. And everything inside of me says, don't make a move. I'll ask Sharon. Your name came highly recommended from several friends of mine. Please, Sharon, tell me what to do. Whatever you say I should do, I will do. Yeah, did he now, hmm, super rat to your junior league friends that you're with all the time? Boy, he's got kahunas, girlfriend, okay? He's got kahunas. Well, I can tell you, if you're a member of the junior league, you do come from a group of affluent people here in town, because this is local, you said. Okay, <laughs> oh boy. 28 years, and he did two, I mean, when I say he did two, it was two girlfriends you mentioned here in the Junior League, two? Okay, the first thing I would do is I would corner these women. That is the first thing I'd do, because what they did was like a betrayal, um, and that just knocks out any kind of friendship you could ever have. Do you understand? I would confront them face to face, balls to the wall type of thing, girlfriend, okay? And and I would let them know you know about it. And I would also let them know that you may be telling their husbands about it. And I know this is going to be horrifying for them and they're going to be shocked. But so good. <laughs> They were tipping in the wrong, you know, till, if you know what I mean, girlfriend. They should have left your husband alone. And especially since they were uh, being friends with you. I, this is sneaky stuff. I don't like this. The next thing I want you to do before you do anything else is go talk to a lawyer. Because, <laughs> I mean, let's not be stupid, girl, right? Okay. And since, you know, you come from this affluent situation here, neighborhood, and your home, and everything you've got assets, go see a lawyer girlfriend first. Because it's, I don't think anything is going to solve this little issue right away. So you need to go to a top-notch number one lawyer. If you don't have one, you give me a call, okay? You need barracudas here, a team of them. Um, and, you know, I <laughs> take everything, of course. I mean, I cannot even believe he did this. I know how devastated you are. I know how hurt you are, sweetheart. I see you've had a lot of years of marriage here. But something tells me this is not his first time. Do you know what I mean? And um, I'm not going to say it's going to be the last. And he can be... It's not even a midlife crisis at this stage of the game. Because you did mention here that you all were approaching 58. 
pretty soon, 58 years old, or you were something. And so, I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Something's wrong up here with him. And all these years of marriage, nah, girlfriend. He had a lot of help convincing him, trust me, because if there were two of these little junior league ladies in the same till, I think they were playing kind of a game, and maybe it was for your benefit. But I would start exactly where I said, approach them first and let them know that everything that, you know, they've got is at stake of being lost because you're going to go to their husbands. The next thing is I would talk to a lawyer first, then as soon as you kind of tap in with the lawyer and find out everything, if he hasn't already heard from these other women that you do know, and that's why I want you to beat him to go into the lawyer first before you have a talk with him. I want you to be first. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I know you do. Then what I want you to do is have a powwow with him. I'm really shocked and disturbed that he would go for an affair with people that are that close to you. Although, I'm not surprised at the women. Women are, and I hate to say it, ladies, but there's so many of you that are vicious and crazy and will do this to another girlfriend. And so, I'm, you know, shame on these ladies. And I think they, you know, their husbands need to know about it. But we can actually approach the husbands after we let them suffer for a while. See, if you bring it to the girlfriend's attention what you know, and that you're going to go to their husbands, they're sitting there thinking about what they're going to lose. Because they're in the same group uh, financially, and so they're sitting there going, oh my gosh, I could lose my home, I could lose this, I could lose that, I could lose this. Uh, you know, what am I going to do? I might even have to have to find a job to support myself or something like that. Are you following me? Because this is all going to explode. I can promise you. This is just going to explode. But I think you need to be real smart about it and have your bases covered first. So go to a lawyer first, then sit down and have a powwow afterwards. Chances are, like I said, he may already know. He may even approach you first, but you get to that lawyer as fast as you can because you need options and you need to know how you're protected as well. And I would start hiding stuff and moving stuff around, but I think your lawyers will tell you that. Because that's the way we roll in Texas, you know what I mean? We're going to make sure our assets are taken care of. Absolutely. So do that. I am so sorry to hear that this happened to you in this late time in life. But girlfriend, like I said, I don't think it was the first time ever. And I think it's happened before. And I think it now it's just that you found out now about it, okay? But you've got to take care of you. And goodness, you said you had two kids by this marriage. Um, obviously, they're grown children, but I know they were. They're going to be devastated too. But good luck to you. Keep me posted. All right, get to that lawyer, girlfriend. Okay. Oh my goodness! Oh, I hate to be in his shoes. Ah, <laughs> middle aged and all that, and thinking about a divorce. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Come on, men. Stop it. We're not stupid. We're going to get you if you mess with us, okay? Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's see. <laughs> the next question here. Thank you so much for answering my question. My name is Diane. I am overweight and can't seem to lose any weight. My doctor says that I need to lose 40 to 50 pounds so I won't get diabetes and heart issues, sleep apnea, and other issues health-wise. He wants me to exercise every day. I can't, I can't get motivated to do this. Motivated to do this. Can you help me? Oh, my lady. <laughs> That's hard to do, isn't it? I think exercise kind of sucks, if you ask me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm having to, I'm having to exercise really, really hard as far as cardio three days a week. And, uh, y you know, it's only about an hour and 40 minutes, you know, per day. 
But like I said, it's heavy cardio. And that's a little bit different than what I was doing before when I was dieting. You know, I was just doing my walking and some light exercises, blah, blah, blah. And that was great. But of course, now I'm exercising for a different issue. My heart. And you say here that your doctor wants you to lose 40 to 50. Okay. I, I Let me tell you what I would do if I were in your position. If I were in your position... I would start off just by walking every day, and I would walk to enjoy the walk. If you haven't started even with 20, 20 steps, I mean 20,000 steps, I would start with 10, 10,000 steps. If you have, get you a Fitbit, girl, and I'd just go out, and if you can't go out somewhere, walk somewhere where you can get the walking in, inside, like a gym or something, and I would at least get in 10,000 steps. Then after you've conquered that, I would move up to 20,000 steps. And I would walk, just enjoy the walk if you're not used to any type of exercise. Then after that, I think that you should get a trainer. If you're not used to any exercise at all, every gym has a great trainer. And I would get to the gym and I would hire a trainer for a little while to teach you basics that you can do on your own. Uh, any kind of walk away the pounds tapes by Leslie Sansom. Any type of calisthenics like we used to do in high school. Now, when you exercise, I know misery loves company. Okay, girlfriends, let's just face it, it does. But if you have a girlfriend that'll do it with you great if not like I said get to a gym and you know ju just hire a little bit you don't have to have him full time but I would hire a trainer to teach you the exercises and show you the machines and what have you so you can go and do it yourself now if you're um, a woman that is on um, social security and medicare and all that right now you know we can go to the gym for for free you know, there's a lot of gyms around, and you don't have to pay for memberships. Now, you might have to toss something to a trainer, but, you know, you have free access to a gym, I can tell you that. All right? And good luck with that. And as far as your eating, I would break your calorie intake down to 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. I was doing just 1,000 a day, and, man, that weight was flying off, okay? So that's what I, that's what I would do if I were you. And good luck. You keep me posted if you need any other help. I do have a video on how I lost, what, 42 pounds or something in a couple of months. If you'll check my playlist out and watch that, I am very specific about what I ate and how much I ate and the exact exercises I did. And maybe that will help you, okay? Thanks for your question, girlfriend. I appreciate it. Okay. Dear Sharon. Okay, my name is James. And I decided to contact you as my ex-wife raved about you after attending one of your events. Now, I am 68 years old, uh, obviously single, and have been dating a 58-year-old woman for several years now. I met her on a dating site, and we hit it off right away. I was attracted to her because she is very active and in great shape. She snow skis, she swims, rides bikes, works out at a gym daily, and that was a real turn-on to me as I would never date a woman my age. They look old and out of shape. I want someone that's in shape and very attractive. So to make a long story short, she started ignoring me just around the holidays with excuses of things to do. I see her less, and after the holidays, has informed me that she doesn't feel the same way about me anymore. Through the grapevine, I found out that she is seeing someone just as wealthy, and he is her age. I am livid and extremely hurt. What do I do and do you think I should move on? Wow. Okay, you're 68. She's So she's 58. You know what? You have no choice but to move on. I mean, if you think she's going to be coming back to you, I don't see it unless she gets what she wants, okay? If she's 58 years old now... She's dating someone that is her age and not 10 years older. 
apparently several things happen. She is panicking because she thinks she may get old and she'd have to be your nurse. The next thing is you all are not going and doing enough to satisfy her to keep her interested. And when I say that, um, when you find a big age difference of 10 years, usually the woman's looking for security for herself down the line. Regardless of what she's got, it doesn't matter. They're looking for a security, both financial and every other thing. And personally, she's the one that wants to be taken care of. And as far as the bucket list, she has got things she wants to do or travel or places to go. And, of course, you've got to subsidize that. So if she has decided, tag, you're not it right now, then you did not fulfill what she had in her head when she got into this uh, years back. You say you've been going with her quite a few years. So it's done. It's truly done, James. And, and I hate to say it, but whoa. Now, you know what? Let me ask you a question. James, if you're 68, you said you would not date anybody your age, which is 68, because they're old and wrinkled or flabby or whatever you said here. Listen, let me tell you something. Not all of us women are shocked, okay? We're just truly not. But I will tell you one thing. This thing you have in your head about finding a younger woman, why don't we just try to look for a woman that is super compatible for you, one that you'll fall in love with, and one that will fall in love with you, and not just for your assets, okay? I mean, because I'm hearing with this relationship you had, it was all about the bucks, boyfriend, okay? Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm a, I'm a woman. I know what they think, okay? And that's exactly where this was going. But right now, I'm saying to you, you can find even a 60 to 63-year-old woman that would be a dream for you. It doesn't matter about the age. Age is such an illusion. You need to get out there and find somebody that's going to make your heart go pit a pat and someone that's not going to leave you high and dry after several years of not fulfilling her dream, so to speak, okay? Um, I think you're doing it wrong, and I think maybe you, you need a little adjustment up here. Perhaps a counselor might help you just a little bit with that. And I'm not saying you're cracked because you want a younger woman. I mean, that's the way men are. They want all these, you know, young, sweet things. And even though she's not really uber young, she's younger than you. She's in the menopausal years, so to speak, and are just leaving it. So that is, that is generally, you know, where they go with all this. Um, I don't see you getting back together. I really do think this is the end. So I implore you to put your feelers out. And let's find somebody else. If you keep looking, you're going to find somebody that's just crazy about you. But watch for the triggers. Watch for the signs. Because so many women, I know I have so many clients that are on like Match.com and some of these and the men are saying, Sharon, I hear from at least 30 a day young women. They're wanting me to take them to Cabo and their friends to Cabo. They're wanting me to pay for this, pay for that. And they're getting at least 30 of those hitting on their side a day from younger women because younger women want to be kept up. That's the way it is. There isn't any more, especially the millennials. It's really popular right now. So, I mean, mm -mm, mm -mm. let's, let's kind of Move away from that, and let's look for more stability. No offense, but if you're 68 years old, and I mean, I can see that you're super active, off the charts active for your agent. However, I don't know how many more years you're going to be able to go without something happening. You never know what can happen. I mean, look at me. I just turned 70 in September, and over the holidays... I had a heart attack and had to put two stents in. These are things you never thought would ever happen. And you're supposed to be in this great shape and real healthy. Anything can happen at any time. And with age, that just, <laughs> you know, that just ups our trigger a little bit. I mean, it brings us closer to the danger, danger. So you have to take real good care of yourself. I'm glad you do. However, let's face it, you're 68. Come on, give yourself a break. But I would get back online or get friends 
to introduce you to someone more or a little closer to your age group that's not really out there, you know, and all shriveled up and flabby and not there to rip you off if you understand take you to the cleaners. Just try it. You have nothing to lose at this stage of the game, okay? Try it, James. It'll work. Trust me. Okay? Thanks for your question. Dear Sharon, my name is Shelly. I have been divorced for about seven years now, and I am still very, very lonely. I can't seem to find a permanent mate. I think I am still in love with my ex and can't go forward. Should I try and reunite with my ex or get therapy and move on? I am lonely without a man. Okay. First of all, a man does not make your existence. This does not make you complete. That's got to do with you, my lady, okay? I'm hearing signs codependent, codependent, codependent throughout this whole thing. You don't need a man. You want a man, you think, okay? Because you're still probably hung up on this ex. I can tell you right now, if he's the next, there's a reason for it. Because there were issues. He's the next. Leave him alone. He's the next. He's gone. He's done. Finished. Through. Kaput. Stop trying to create something or bring back the same old, same old that you had. If you are interested in dating and want to meet someone and spend the rest of your life with them, I suggest you get this straight first. I want you to read the book, Codependence No More. It is the most fantastic book you'll ever read. Possibly see a therapist if you want to, okay, or if you can. I would, and I would get strong and feel good about you. You don't seem like you're very confident right now, or you wouldn't be wanting to go back with the same old stuff. Uh, and take that kind of chance of being dumped again, okay? I don't want you to do that. That'll hurt. So, I think that it's better if we kind of get you straight first, and then let's kind of get you out there dating. Maybe put you online or something, or maybe friends can introduce you to someone. But let's take care of you first, or you're going to keep repeating these same mistakes. Okay, girlfriend? Remember, Codependence No More, fantastic book. You'll love it. Think about the therapist. That'll help you feel good about you. Or, give me a call. You can join my coaching. I guarantee your confidence level will go up then. Okay, girl? Love you. Take care of you, Shelly. Okay, let me see what else I have here, my ladies. And no name here. Okay. What are good medical grade products? And is clinical strength the same as medical grade? Yes, it should be. I call it all medical grade. And what are good medical grade? Let, let me just give you a few off the top of my head. Neocutus. Um, skin Suiticals, Skin Medica, Truth Treatments, uh, Skin Better, Osmosis, which is a little cleaner, okay, but it's there. And these are just a few, few that you can tap into if you want to get interested in it. Um, I will say this right now, uh, you can find any of these products on uh, Brianna Stanko's uh skincare site called premierlook.com she has got most of these lines there these are the top medical grade lines and yes there there is a one that is a fantastic true treatments um, was put together by dr. Fuchs you know um, I think if you've watched any of Brianna's videos she has even interviewed him before and he is a fantastic doctor that created this line that is off the charts fabulous and Neocutis is an oldie but a goodie I, I, I use a lot of Neocutis especially the Bio Serum and the Hyalis is their hyaluronic acid love it love it love it love it love it everybody knows how I feel about skin Suitical C, Skin Medica, TNS and then the eye cream. I like Revision. She even carries Revision. That's another great, great medical grade uh, that invented by doctors. So any of these would be great for you to start with, okay? If you need any more help, feel free to contact me. We'll put a whole regimen together for you, okay? Okay, thanks for your question, girl. And the next question is, 
Dear Sharon, should I continue with Tretinoin 0.05% three times a week if my skin is red and burning and it's flaking when I even apply moistures or serums? I have been using it for five months now. Oh, heck no. Stop it altogether. Stop right now. Because obviously this is a little too strong for you. Something's going wrong in your regimen. I'd like for you to go ahead and call me and we'll talk about this. See if we can't get it straight for you. But if after five months you're still going through all this burning, you're using it too much. Three times a week is too much. When you start um, treadnoing, uh, uh, commonly called retin-A, you got to start off very slowly, girlfriend. Very slowly. You start off with just one night a week. And you do that, and sometimes you have to do it for two months before you can graduate to maybe another night. You see what I'm saying? And do the same thing. It takes time to build up with retin-A. If not, you're going to fry your skin. You're doing more harm than good, and you're, gonna, you're a mess. You know, and you say, I'm a mess. Help, help. Danger, danger. And that's what has happened here, sweetheart. Three times a week is way, way too much. So let's stop it all right now. Heal the skin. Keep on everything natural and, and good for sensitive skin right now. And then when you're healed, let's start over with the tretinoin and let's just do it one night a week. One. One night a week. And we're going to go for a long time on one night a week. Okay? That is all. And then we'll go from there and build you back up. Okay? you got to be really careful, sweetheart. Thanks for your question. Appreciate it. Okay, last but not least, this is from Christy. Sharon, is there anything commercially available that really minimizes forehead lines? No. Now, some kind of help you, you know, diminish lines. And that's, you know, medical grade obviously helps with that. Um, you can do... Um, some microdermabrasion that's kind of old school right now just a hydrofacial you know helps sometimes but if you're talking about the actual bands and wrinkles going across Botox is phenomenal for that fillers phenomenal for that but just any product that will totally soften the whole entire thing any medical grade will soften it somewhat but it's not going to disappear unless you go this other route. It's just not. And the older we become and the more we sag, the wrinkles get more, you know, prominent. So, what can I tell you, girlfriend? Mm -mm. Lasers are terrific. Oh, my God. Fractional lasers would be a godsend, too. So, I would talk to your dermatologist. Go see him or her. And I, you know, talk about your wrinkles because they'll say, okay, let's do some laser. If laser is the choice that they want to put you on, go for it, okay? If they want you to do just some medical grade for a while, girlfriend, go for it. What, if they want you to do Botox for instant results, fine, because lasers take a little while. And, and usually not one laser trip, if you know what I mean. Sometimes they're, you know, three laser treatments and you do them with a certain amount of time in between. But all, everyone's different. You have to ask your doctor about that, okay? All right. I want to thank you, ladies, for being with me today. Boy, we were loaded with some good ones today, weren't we, girlfriends? I want to thank each and every one of my new subscribers for visiting me. I love you to death. Mwah, 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 mwah. Can't wait to know you better, girls. Yes, sirree. And to all of my subscribers, I want you to stay sissy and confident and give me a big thumbs up on this video.